Shalom, shalom. Yam Shabuos. May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. Today's video is going to be a blessed one. Uh, may our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit be with us again. And this video will be about why do we still have the Bible? It's a question that I've asked our Father, you know, before. You know, you just wait for the revelations on these things. You're patient, you fast, you pray, and you work. And it's a, it's a great question, you know, because it's like you blessed us with all of the words to this life. You know, and it's like, it's okay. And it's just like, why? <laughs> you know, like, why? Why did you? Why did you give us like the literal cheat code to the to the game? You know, it's like, it's like, how could we lose with this? You know, and it's sad that many are called and few are chosen, and that many brothers and sisters don't understand the the power in this thing and how important it is to understand why you're even here and sadly they listen to what man says and not what our father in heaven says you know they say that our father's way isn't perfect but a man's way really isn't perfect and they're liars you know like even stealing the name abraham like we learned about abraham in school and it called them like one of the forefathers like fathers of the nations and that's literally what abraham who abraham was and that the fake abraham the real abraham and let me open this door up so i gotta get a little bit of Air and it's it be like just a little bit. Yeah, but so, <laughs> and then of course it's like a bunch of noise. You know how you do it, but hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, yeah, so I'm also gonna put my phone in the disturb. So give me a second. Okay, so we're gonna start with because why 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 we still have the Bible? The the question is um. Simple question, simple answer. We still have the Bible because um, it's just simply the covenant. You know, many people will be like, why would he just give us this? Even other unbelievers, then it's like, why they believe it's fake? Because they're like, why would he just give us that? You know, like, why would we have the literal truth? Why would we have literally all the answers? Why would we have literally everything just sitting right here? You know, like, I just sit right next to me, like all the words of his life. But understand also, too, Satan took many words out and he added many words, too. That's why there's so many different interpretations of it. And this is why it's important for us to learn Hebrew. If you're a true believer, for sure, even if it's just like a word day by day, like understanding Abba and Shalom, Shalom. Abba's his father is coming, you know, Ab, father. And then in the scriptures, it, it uses the term Abba. I have to look deeper into that thing as well. There's many revelations to uncover. But shalom, shalom. The shalom by itself means peace, hello, love, and bye. You know, so it can mean many things in terms. That's why people open up the videos and they'll say shalom, shalom. You know, also when you enter into somebody's home, you know, it's supposed to be peace people at this home. And if they don't receive the peace, you'll take it back, as the Messiah told. So shalom, shalom be to this home or be if wherever somebody's home is or just wherever the area is. That's why, you know, I love the now father will me to be able to just give me the strength you know to level up myself and in the flesh and in the spirit of course to like even when i speak to people i just i try to say peace to most people that i speak to and just let them know even in the flesh because you don't want to be fake and you know it'd be texting a certain type of way and you don't talk in this type of what type of way but you want to ask our father to master allow your tongue to be master make every thought obedient to the messiah so that you understand what's really going on out here like our father lets me know this every single day like understand what you're saying you, you really need to understand what you're saying because it's just very very important to understand what you're saying and it's very very important to have patience very very important to just take a second to just chill very very important to understand and just put yourself at rest for a second <laughs> you know so bear sheaf 17 i hope you guys can hear me well uh genesis the first covenant between abraham and our father in heaven bear sheaf 17 um one and you guys could go here and follow along i have the bible next to me too we'll be we'll be going over a few things <laughs> you know so yep yeah 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 okay yep so this is the first covenant uh between abraham you know and then it's it starts you know the first i believe the first first covenant was between noah and our father um i have to fact check myself on that but yeah, may our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit be with us. Real life stuff, man. It's, it's a blessing. Okay, so Abraham 17, 1 through 16. That's what we will be going through. And it came to be when Abram was 99 years old that our Father in heaven appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, 
walk before me and be perfect. Notice it says, walk before me and be perfect. This stuff isn't a new command. He already told us to be perfect and to walk before him. And I give my covenant between me and you. Uh, I actually skipped over three as well. So one, two. I'll just be letting you know. So now this is uh, Bear Sheep 17 too. And I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you. If you're also wondering why um, even there's no respected persons, like why even unbelievers still continually to get blessed. It's just literally just because our father in heaven is showing us again his covenant like he's not a liar, bro. So he's just that's why it says outstretched arm, you know, like in my strong hand, because he he literally is outstretching his arm even still for us today, like going overboard for us, doing many, many things. Like even the fact that this is still here and he's giving people time to repent, like gave me time to repent when he could have killed me, you know. People got to understand these things like they, they, they blaspheme our father and Messiah and sadly the Ruach like most of them all day. And it's like you don't even understand why you're here. You don't even understand the position that you're placed in. You don't even understand how much of a blessing this is. Our father is willing me each and every day to understand that this is so much of a blessing more than what people even understand. Like it's not about video games. It's not about porn. It's not about lust. It's not about wrath. It's all about understanding all the words of this life each and every day. I mean, so. As for me, so this is four. Bear sheep seventeen four. As for me, look, my covenant is with you, and you shall become a father of many nations. Five. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, because I shall make you a father of many nations. Bear sheep seventeen six. And I shall make you exceedingly fruitful, and make nations of you, and sovereigns shall come from you. Seven seventeen seven. And I shall establish my covenant. Between me and you and your seed after you and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be Elohim to you and your seed after you. Eight, and I shall give to you and your seed after you the land of, of your sojournerings, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession. And I shall be their Elohim. And Elohim said to Abraham, as for you, guard my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. So all we got to do is guard his covenant. This ten, this is my covenant which you guard between me and you and your seed after you. Now this is 15 right here. So we're jumping from 10 to 15. But it says, this is my covenant with you. This is 10. This is my covenant with you. Guard between me and you and your seed after you. 15 and 16. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, do not call her name Sarai, for, her, for Sarai is her name. And I shall bless her and also give you a son by her. And I shall bless her and she shall become nations. Sovereigns of peoples are to be from her. So we all came from from them. Um, of course, Adam and Eve, and then, you know, uh, many things happened. You know, our father literally wiped everything out, started to back off. Noah, Shem, Ham, you know, them. And then, you know, trickled down back just through the generations to us now. So Bereshev, Genesis 21, 21 and 3. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, who, shall, who said born to him, Yitzhak. So Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yisrael is where the covenants come from. And our father is literally just expanding and just showing us the covenant again more so through confirming the covenant with Isaac, who is Yitzhak, and then answering Yitzhak's prayers. And then it's just furthermore being confirmed. So Bereshev 20, 22, 15, And the messenger of our father in heaven called to Abraham a second time from the heavens and said, By myself I have sworn, declares our father in heaven, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son. This is when he was about to put him on the altar. That I shall certainly bless you. So he was just like, it was like he was checking his faith after what had previously happened. Now it's like a faith check, which also comes to us, as we can see in Job. What this, this you get faith checks. Are you really doing this? Are you really not doing this? What's going on? So that I shall certainly bless you, and I shall certainly increase your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on this on the seashore, and let your seed possess the gate of their enemies. And this is beautiful because it says, and let your seed possess the gate of their enemies. We're going to speak because that, that's talked about in Psalms as well, just to let you know that our Father in heaven again is in a capper, like Satan is a capper. You know, we love you, Satan. We love our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit way more. Love our Father in heaven overall. Love our Father in heaven with all our strength, all our might, all our being, and all our might, all our mind. Amen. And, and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. You see? And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And then we have confirming the covenant with Isaac, Yitzhak, answer Yitzhak's prayer. So right here is Bear Sheaf 25, 21 through 27. 
And Yitzhak prayed to our father in heaven for his wife because she was barren and our father in heaven answered his prayer. And Ribka, his wife, conceived and within her, the children struggled together. And she said, if all is right, why am I this way? So she went to ask our father in heaven. And you see, and Yitzhak prayed to our father in heaven for his wife because she was barren. And our father in heaven answered his prayer. And Ribka, his wife, conceived. You see, he answered Yitzhak. So this thing, these things are being confirmed. You know, he he did not answer his prayer because our Father in Heaven can certainly not answer you. You pray to him. This is what many people don't understand. The depths of our Father in Heaven, the depths of Satan, they certainly don't understand. And they certainly don't understand the depths of the Ruach. And they certainly don't understand the depths of the Messiah, which you need to. I mean, definitely go back and read the Torah, the Tanakh, so that you can understand the whole Mikra Kodesh, the whole Holy Bible. And within her, the children struggled together. And she said, if all is right, why am I this way? So she went to ask our Father in Heaven. And our Father in Heaven said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people shall be separated from your body. And it's beautiful that Abraham brought forth Yitzhak, and Yitzhak brought forth Yisrael. And our Father in Heaven said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people shall be separated from your body. And one people shall be stronger than the other, and the, other, and the older serve the younger. And when the days were filled for her to give birth and see twins were in her womb, and it first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So they called his name Esau. And you see the first one came out red. So I don't know why people be trying to disrespect. Like they said the red man or whatever. You know things that people got going on. That's just not of our father. If you got hate in your heart. How do you expect to make it into the kingdom of heaven? The Messiah didn't come down here and literally hate anybody. He literally loved everybody. That's why we're supposed to literally love everybody. Like as the Messiah loved them. Heavy duty right? Yeah. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, so they called his name Esau. I mean, and afterward, his brother came out with his hand holding on to Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. And Yitchak was 60 years old when she, when she bore them. Okay, I'll finish off by reading Bereshit 27 because I couldn't write it on here. Bereshit was Genesis, by the way. This is 25, 21 through 27. And the boys grew up, and Esau became a man knowing how to hunt, a man of the field, while Jacob was a complete man dwelling in tents. And Yitzhak uh, loved Esau because he had, he ate of his wild game, but Ripka loved Jacob. And Jacob cooked the stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. That is why his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright today. And Esau said, Look, I'm going to die, so why should I ha have birthright? Then Jacob said, Swear to me today, and he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob is Jacob, Jacob is Israel, Israel. Jacob then gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and he ate and drank and rose up and left. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Okay, so then we're, we're going to continue on to read Bereshit 26 1 through 25. And there was a scarcity of food in the land. This is. Right here is confirming the covenant with Isaac, right here. And there was a scarcity of food in the land, besides the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abraham. And Yitzhak went to Abimelech, servant of the Philistines in Gerar. And our father in heaven appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Mitzvahim. Live in the land which I command you. So join in this land, and I shall be with you and bless you. For I give all these lands to you and your seed, and I shall establish the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I shall increase your seed like the stars of the heavens, and I shall give all these lands to your seed. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, and my Torah. Amen. And Yitzhak dwelt in Gerar, and when the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, She is my sister. For he was afraid to say she is my wife, thinking lest this man of the place should kill me for Ripka, because she is good looking. <laughs> and this is uh, funny to notice right here because his daddy did the same thing. Abraham did the same thing. And it came to be when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, servant of the Philistines, looked through a window and he watched and saw Yishak playing with Ripka, his wife. So Abimelech called Yishak and said, See, truly she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? And Yishak said to him, Because I said, Lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people had almost lain with your wife and you, have, and you would have brought guilt on us and Abimelech commanded all his people saying he who touches this man or his wife shall certainly be put to death and Yitzhak sowed in that land and reaped in the, in the same year a hundredfold and our father in heaven blessed him and the man grew great 
and went forward until he became very great, and he came to have and he came to have possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great body of servants, and the Philistines and envied him. Wow, this is beautiful, just like his father and a great body of servants. And the Philistines envied him, and the Philistines had stopped had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father and filled them with dirt. And Abimelech said to Yitzhak, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. So Yitzhak went from there and pitched his tent in the Wadi Gerar and dwelt there. And Yitzhak dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the, de after the death of Abraham, and he called them by the names which his father had called them. But when Yitzhak's servants dug in the Wadi and found a well of running water there, the herdsmen of Gerar strove with Yitzhak's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isek. Because they strove with him, and they dug another well, and they and they strove over that one too, and he called his name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not strive over it, and he called his name Rehoboth, and said, For now our father in heaven has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And from there he went up to Beersheba, and our father in heaven appeared to him the same night and said, I am the Elohim of your father Abraham, do not fear, for I am with you, and shall bless you and increase you, and, and increase your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. <laughs> And he built a slaughter place there and called on the name of our father in heaven. And he pitched his tent there and the servants of Yishak dug a well there. And Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Uzzah, one of his friends, and they called the commander of his army. And Yishak said to them, Why have you come to me, seeing you have hated me and have sent me away from you? But they said, We have clearly seen that our father in heaven is with you. And we said, Please let there be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you. That you do no evil to us as we have not touched you, and as we have done only good toward you, and have sent you away in peace, you are now blessed by our Father in heaven. And he made them a feast, and they drank, actually read the whole thing, <laughs> and they and they rose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another, and Yitshak let them go, and they departed from him in peace. And on the same day it came to be that the servants of Yitshak came and informed him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, and said to him, We have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. And understand, if these things were named to this day, it's still that name to this day, no matter what they what, what these people try to call it today. Nah, it's still Beersheba to this day, you know. And when Esau was 40 years old, he took his wives, Yehudith, Yudith, the daughter of Berai, the Hittite, and Basamoth, the daughter of Alan, the Hittite, and they were a bitterness of spirit to Yitzhak and Ripka. Mm. Okay, so... I love the Bible, man. This is the truth. So now, we're going to take it to Yaakov. Learn about our brother. See what Yisrael got going on. Bear sheep. You go to Genesis 28, 10 through 16. I keep getting excited and reading more because I just, y'all don't understand, man. I was, I was being a devil. I wasn't into this. I like I remember watching shows like Johnny Test, a bunch of stuff I was doing. Young boy, even now, to this, I mean, like when I was doing all the stuff I was doing, you know, the father knows I ain't done that stuff in a minute. But, bro, that stuff is just sad, bro. Like, cause I was so interested in all of this stuff, right? It doesn't make any sense. Like, all of this stuff that doesn't have nothing to do with the body of Messiah. I'm doing a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with helping anybody out spiritually. I wasn't helping anybody out physically. Not even telling them what to eat, right? I didn't even know what to eat. I didn't even know how to think. I didn't even know what to do, you know? It's just a blessing to still be breathing, brothers and sisters. I just, if you're going to take anything from Rest Israel, from Dylan Anthony Morton, understand that you need to just rest and chill. <laughs> I understand that it's a blessing to breathe. Okay, Genesis 28, 10 through 16. And Yaakov went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came upon a place and stopped over for the night, for the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and saw a ladder set up, set up on the earth, and its top reached to the heavens and saw messengers of Elohim going up and coming down on it. And see, our Father in heaven stood above and said, I am my Father in heaven, Elohim of Abraham, your father, and Elohim of Yitzhak. The land on which you are lying, I give it to you and your seed. And your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And you shall break forth to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the clans of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your seed. And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and it said, Truly our Father in heaven is in his place, and I did not know it. 
and I'll just continue. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of the heavens. And Yaakov rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a standard column, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. However, the name of that city had been lost previously. And Yaakov made a vow saying, Seeing Elohim is with me and has kept me in, in this way that I am going and has given me bread to eat and a garment to put on when I have returned to my father's house in peace. And our Father in heaven has put my Elohim and our Father in heaven has been my Elohim. Then this stone which I have set as a standing column shall be Elohim's house. And of all that you give me, I shall certainly give a tenth to you. Amen. Now we're going to read Bereshit 35, 9 through 15. Genesis 35, 9 through 15. It's a blessing to be breathing. I pray that most see it. Amen. It's a blessing to be breathing. I pray that most see it. Amen. And Elohim appeared to Jacob again when he came from Baran Aram and blessed him. And Elohim said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name is no longer called Jacob, but Yisrael is your name. So he called his name Yisrael. And Elohim said to him, I am El Shaddai. Be fruitful and, and increase. A nation and a company of nations shall be from you. And sovereigns come from your body. And the land which I gave Abraham and Yishak I give to you. And to your seed after you. I give this land. And Elohim went up from him. In the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a standing column in the place. Where he had spoken with him. A monument of stone. And he poured a drink offering on it. And he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where Elohim spoke with him. Bethel. <laughs> then they set out from Bethel. And it came to be. When there was a when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Ephrath that Rael began to give birth and had great difficulty giving birth. And it came to be as she was having great difficulty giving birth, that the midwife said, Dear, do not fear, for it is another son for you. And it came to be as her life was going out, for she died, that she called his name Ben Onai, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rael died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a standing column on a burial place, which is the monument of Rael's burial place to this day. And Yisrael set out and pitched his tent before beyond the tower of, of, of Edur. And it came to be when Yisrael dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with it, with Bilah, his father's concubine. And Yisrael heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. Beautiful. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Shema'an, and Levi, and Yehuda, and Yisachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rael, were Yosef, and Benjamin, the sons of Bilah. Rael's, Rael's female servant were Dan and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Le Leah's female servant, were God and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Pada and Aram. I just want to pay attention to the name Leah real fast because I'd ask our father to for forgive me even like in the recent years, like 2020, even like um beginning of 2021, you know, just I, I literally was so into Star Wars. I still was so into video games and Sadly, you know, it's all into that stuff, and I had to ask our Father Masano Spirit to forgive me for that. But I, I didn't know most of these names, like Luke, Leia, and all this stuff came from the scriptures. They take everything from the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Understand that. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. So, and the sons of Zil Zilpah, Leia's female servant, were Gad and Asher. And this stuff is way cooler than that stuff, brothers and sisters. This stuff right here is life. Literally life. Amen. And the sons of Zilpah, Leia's female servant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram, and Jacob came to his father Yitzhak at Mamre or Koriah Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Yitzhak had sojourned. And the days of Yitzhak were 180 years. So Yitzhak breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, aged and satisfied of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. <laughs> Amazing. So now we're going to understand the covenant that our father came through and did with the Messiah, and how, you know, if you believe in the Messiah, you know, you, this is this key to everlasting life. You know, we're going to touch on a few things over here. So let's take it to Yohanan, John 3, 16 through 21. Yes, sir. Yohanan 3, 16 through 21. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but possess everlasting life. For Elohim did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only brought forth son of Elohim. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. For everyone who is practicing evil matters, 
hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But the one doing the truth comes to the light, so that his works are clearly seen, that they have been wrought in Elohim. Amen. Now we're going to take it to Hebrews 9, 15. And because of this, he is the mediator of a, of a renewed covenant, so that death having taken taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. For where a covenant is, it is necessary for the death of the covenanted one to be established. For a covenant over those dead is firm, since it is never valid while the covenanted one is living. Therefore not even the first covenant was instituted without blood, for one according to Torah, every command had been spoken by Moshe to all the people. He took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool, and this up and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which Elohim commanded you. Yeah, because it's the one. And then taking it to, to Shemoth too, which is, and in the same way he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all the vessels of the service. And according to the Torah, almost all is cleansed with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It was necessary then that he copies, that the copies of the heavenly ones should be cleansed with these, but the heavenly ones themselves with better slaughter offerings than these. For Messiah has not entered into a set apart place made by hand, figures of the true, but into the heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of Elohim on our behalf. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters into the set apart place year by year with blood, not his own. For if so, he would have he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the offering of himself. And as it awaits men to die once and after this the judgment, so also the Messiah, having been offered once to, hear, to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time apart from sin to those waiting for him unto deliverance. Amen. Okay, so we can even take it to Shemaph. Four and eight, and, and this is uh, Exodus. And he took, yeah, he was read from the top. And to Moshe he said, "Come up to our father, heaven, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall bow yourselves from a distance. But Moshe shall draw near to our father, heaven, by himself, and let them not draw near, nor let the people go up with them." And Moshe came and related to the people all the words of our father in heaven. And all the right rulings and all the people answered with with one voice and said, All the words which our Father in heaven has spoken, we shall do. And Moshe wrote down all the words of our Father in heaven and rose up early in the morning and built a slaughter place at the foot of the mountain. And twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, and they offered ascending offerings and slaughter off and slaughter and slaughter slaughterings of peace offerings to our Father in heaven of bulls. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in baskets, and half the blood he sprinkled on the slaughter place. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that our Father in heaven has spoken, we shall do and obey. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant which our Father in heaven has made with you concerning all these words. And Moshe went up also Aaron and Adab and Abiah and seventy of the children and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel and under his feet, like a paved work of sapphire stone and like the heavens for brightness. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the chief, against the chiefs of the children of Israel. And they saw Elohim, and they ate and drank. And our Father in heaven said to Moshe, Come up to me on the mountain, and be there while I give you tablets of stone and the Torah and the command which I have written to teach them. And Moshe arose with his assistant, Yahshua, and Moshe went up to the mountain of Elohim. And he said to the elders, mm. He said, While I give you tablets of stone and the Torah and then and the command which I have written to teach them. He writ that. And Moshe arose with his assistant, Yahshua, and Moshe went up to the mountain of Elohim. And he said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you and see Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has matters, let him go to them. And Moshe went up into the mountain and a cloud covered the mountain. And the esteem of our father in heaven dwelt on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moshe out of the midst of the cloud 
and the appearance of the esteem of our Father in heaven was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain before the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And it came to be that Moshe was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. That's, this is beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bonus round. That was that was a bonus, extra bonus. <laughs> Go to Psalms 127. Because you see how it says, okay, first go to Psalms 127. Okay, here we go. Psalms 127. Could you see in bear sheep in Genesis 18? No, it's, it's in Genesis 17, it says that I shall certainly bless you and I shall certainly increase your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore and let your seed possess the gate of their enemies. It says, what, Psalms 127, 4 through 5, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of one's youth. Blesses the man who has filled his quiver with them. They are not ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. And let your seed possess the gate of their enemies. They are not ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. If our Father in heaven does not build the house, its builders have labored in vain. If our Father in heaven does not guard the city, the watchmen have stayed awake in vain. In vain do you rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of toil, so he gives his beloved sleep. Look, children, are an inheritance from our Father in heaven. The fruit of the womb is the reward, as arrows in the hand of a mighty man. So are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who has filled his quiver with them. They are not ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. To me, our Father, Messiah, Holy Spirit, be with us. I pray that this video was edifying for you. It was certainly edifying for me to just ask our Father about this question and to come up with the study. We certainly have more studies to come. <laughs> our Father knows. Um, we're going to sit, wait patiently, though, and wait for the time for our coming. Thank you, Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit, for allowing us to be breathing right now. I pray that this video, again, was edifying for many of you. And may our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit be with us. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my beautiful day, Father willing. You know, just live and breathe. <laughs> Amen.